Hello, everyone. How are you all doing today? Hopefully you are doing okay. Nice to have you on for our day two, Sweet Success, Mastering Your Travel Request. We are at the top of the hour, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So as you all are joining, let me know where are you watching from and what you were drinking this afternoon and or evening. Uh, we are in the evening time. And then also let me know um, if you've got pen and paper and you're ready to go. So where are you watching from and what are you drinking today? So... I'm hosting you all from Stockbridge, Georgia, and I am drinking water because it is a little bit humid out here in these streets today. South Carolina, awesome, welcome, welcome. Prosper, Texas, my old stomping ground. Virginia, lovely. Lovely. Awesome. We are going to go because we are going to probably go the entire 90 minutes today. We have a lot uh, to go over um, as we did yesterday. So welcome to day two to our Sweet to Sec Success workshop, where today we're going to focus on meaningful conversations that convert. So before we get started, let's do a really quick recap of what we learned yesterday. So yesterday was really an introduction to the OPUS framework, standardizing the way that you um, do one of the most important processes in your business, which is how you accept inquiries for fit and for group leader uh, deals and how you go through to fulfillment. So we went over the five pillars of the OPUS, which stand for Operation Pillars of Success. And then we are this week focused on our request process. So what I always like to do at the beginning of this session, um, the day session, is just see how, what, what were some of the big aha moments for you all as you think about what we went over yesterday? What were some of the big things that you got out of yesterday's session? So I'm going to put this in the chat and see if I can maneuver chat. And I thought I took the wait room off. So hold on, let me do that. So people can join without having to ask permission. Awesome. Automating those steps to free up some time. That's really good. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what's the design fees? So Maria, we went over that in the VIP. I think that was a really good breakthrough uh, for those who joined us in VIP. Yep. Design fees. Did you? Uh, so I gave you guys some homework if you did join us yesterday. And the homework assignment for yesterday, let me just uh, go back there so you can remember. Yesterday's homework was for you to decide your booking goals and to determine where in the process of your current travel request process do you feel like you need the most improvement. So that's actually where we're going to start if I, before we dive in. Did you guys come up with your booking goals and did you figure out like where in your request process needs improvement so that you can get your booking goals now having to uh, having defined that? Some of you guys gave me some really powerful booking goals yesterday. Um, I think we had some 75, 150,000 and a quarter. Some, um, I think we had a 25,000. And so if you already had your goal by the end of yesterday, did you come up to where in your process you need to make the biggest improvement? But I will tell you, and I'm just going to give you this little bit of a reminder. Here's the process that we went over yesterday, the seven step process, and where I find most people have room for improvement is accepting inquiries from the beginning. They're not getting enough inquiries to come in the gate. And that's where we're gonna focus. But today, what we're gonna do is really focus on the conversations that you need to have pre-inquiry and then post-inquiry submission so that we can make sure that we get as many conversions on the back end of that. Do you guys feel game for that today? All right, so let's dive in. And what we're gonna do today is we're going to, before we jump in, let me just remind you all, if you are not in trial with our Travel Pro Suite, we do have a tool 
called Travel Pro Suite, and its goal is to help standardize and centralize and streamline the way that you run and operate your travel business. So this very topic that we're talking about this week, we have provided inside of the Travel Pro Suite done for you inquiry forms, email responses, calendars, pretty much all of the steps that have interaction with your client, we are trying to streamline that process for you. So when we went over the six steps associated with the travel request, we're focused on the intake process, your booking, booking your discovery call and that whole discovery process, and then the presentation layer and how you meet with your suppliers and all that. Unfortunately, we can't influence too much of that because the suppliers are wild and crazy animals. So Anyhow, if you'd like to give us a try, all you have to do is go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash sweet success trial. And we are doing a 14 day free trial where we will help you get your account set up. You'll get to meet with myself or one of my team members um, during orientation, and then you'll get access to all of the done for you travel request setup processes that we have and that we're talking about today. In addition to that, you will have a free masterclass that will explain to you how you personalize the workflows that we do and then also get them set inside of the um, uh, inside of the, the, the software. All right, so Jocelyn, you asked me a question. Does Travel Pro Suite allow you to make referral links? So uh, come off mute if you'd like and tell me what you mean by referral links. What do you mean by that? Hey, good afternoon. Um, so I sometimes work with micro influencers. Mm. Um, I do a lot of group travel. So yes, I, I wanted know to know it. that now. Yes, it's you... called an affiliate link on in, inside of our system. And so you absolutely can create um, an affiliate link for your group trips, any trip for that matter. Give them a link. Um, that would be unique and custom to them. Not only that, we just released the, the ability for you to pay out directly from the system. So let's say you have an influencer, give them a link and they sell five trips and you've negotiated that you give them $150 per trip or whatever you give them, right? You can set that up by percentage or dollar amount. Um, every person that signs up underneath their link, we can track it. And then you can also pay them out and they also have their own sort of portal that they can view how they're doing. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. So let's dive in. Um, if you are interested in that 14 day trial, just go ahead and click on that link I gave you. And that is going to take you straight there to do that. So remember yesterday we talked about, right, where you guys are in your business and one, you know, pretty much, I think to the exception of a few said that you guys want to be high ticket sellers, low, low volume client workers, right? So you want to sell at a high ticket and you want to work with less clients to be able to hit your financial goals. And so we talked about three shifts that are required to do that. Yesterday's shift was really about standardizing the process. Today's shift is really about recognizing that in order for you to achieve your goals does not require you to work with everyone. So um, during our VIP session yesterday, I think we had some pretty great breakthroughs with the people who joined us in VIP. And I told them what we would be talking about this today. And it's really around identifying your who, right? So if you only want to work with, I mean, some of you based on your numbers, it was like five to eight people that you really need to sign up a quarter or a month, depending on what your, you know, your timeline was for the, the goal that you said, if it was a quarterly goal, you know, maybe that's a quarter that you need to sign up for. Whatever the time frame is, the important thing is, is that you understand the number and who matches that criteria. So if you've got five clients that you need to sell, $5,000 packages to, that means that you need to get in front of more than five people, right? Because again, no one has a hundred percent conversion, but who is your perfect client? Have you defined who that is? And do you have a system of qualification? So let's talk about what that means um, to you. So who do you guys help get out of town? Like who, who's your perfect person? 
type in the comments who your perfect person is that you help get out of town or want to help get out of town in your travel business. Tell me who that who that person is. And I don't want demographics. So don't tell me they need to be five, seven, you know, 35 years old. Although those are important characteristics, those are really not as powerful as really understanding a type of person that you want or a group of people that have something in common that they can rally around. Because really what we're doing is tribe building. What we want to do is identify our peeps easily, right? We want to be able to say, yep, that's my tribe member. That's my tribe member. That's my tribe member. That's the person that I want to aggregate and rally around the kind of business that I want to have, the kind of experiences that I want to craft and curate. Who do you guys help get out of town? Type in the comments and let me know. Who are your who's? I feel like Dr. Sue. Who's your who? <laughs> who is your who? It seems like it would be a Dr. Seuss book, right? Who's your who? Love it, Tanya. That's great. Biblical group who wants to visit the Holy Land. And that's a very powerful uh, who group of people. I love, uh, and what I will tell you is, I'm going to give you some examples coming up. And these are actually not the examples that I have on paper are certainly not the example, as good of the examples that I'm going to tell you in person, just because I've been working with a few clients that over the last several weeks that really have defined some very powerful who's like Tanya's who. Tanya says that her who is biblical group of people who want to visit the Holy Land. And I, um, it was a couple of years ago, I was in Cruise World and met um, DMCs who um, specialize in uh, uh, Israel and the Holy Land. Uh, you know, understanding that there's a war going on right now. So you obviously have to be sensitive to the political environment of the areas of the world that you want to travel in. But I did meet with that a couple of destination management uh, companies that came out of there. And just the kind of experiences that they can help you craft really just brought some, you know, brought tears a little bit to my eyes and just the power of that experience and what you're going to be bringing to the table for your clients is, is just pretty amazing. So, um, so some of you have said you want drivers who can tell me what they want to expect. Divers, divers. I was like, drivers, I don't understand. Uh, dri divers who can tell me what they want to experience. Um, okay, so divers, are you talking about like people who like to snorkel, like to di deep sea dive? Like, what do you mean by divers? Um, and then Black women want love, brunch, fine dining, and foodie travel experiences. Love it, Ashley. So it's so funny because I um, just saw on, was it Instagram? Just the other day. And it must have been Instagram because like I, I follow a bunch of food. Like I'm a I'm a, an at-home foodie. Like I like to cook stuff. And so I've been following a bunch of food stuff. And somebody popped up in my, in my, in my gram. That's the right, that's the right new, new word, right? And uh, she was a, a travel blogger, I think. And um, she, no, actually, I think what happened is the, 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 her reel popped up and she had d did a, um, a review of a restaurant in a brunch spot in Atlanta and I mean, it, it, it was, it, and I, I love um, uh, Lebanese food and it was a Lebanese spot. I mean, it's a beautiful spot. And then, you know, of course this is, I did exactly what your clients will do. So if this is your space. I just want you to take this Ashley as just, just an example of what you can do with this. So she did a local review of a restaurant that reminded me of Dubai. Right. And so I'm immediately intrigued because the colors, the sights, everything. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to be able to get some really good Lebanese food here in Atlanta. And it reminded me that I need to get the, the trip booked to Dubai. But you see how that connection and immediately I clicked to see who she was. I found out who her site is. So if I was in if I was looking for somebody to get me back out of town, Right. I don't want to do it myself. I mean, I'm a travel advisor, but I don't want to do it myself. 
I'm going to follow that bunny trail. And so the content that that lady creates is speaking to her client, right? It spoke to my head. It spoke to my senses and moves me to action. That's what content and conversations could do. That actually is a really good example. And if you can learn that today, that would be the objective of today's lesson is how do you create content that's going to speak to your who. All right, so let's talk about some other who's. I'm focused on women 50 plus that have recently overcome a major illness, still haven't realized that, and, and still haven't realized that dream trip. That's a great option, Rhonda. Um, you know, I, um, one of my clients, I keep using her as an example because I think her who is a, a powerful who as well is that she is working with cancer survivors. So she wants to create cancer survivor events where they celebrate, you know, I, I personally have not had cancer, but I know a lot, unfortunately, of, of women who have experienced some form of cancer. And, you know, that one year mark, that six month mark is such an important celebratory event. And what better way to do it out of town amongst girlfriends, friends, people, other people who have that sort of common trait in that mind. So love it. I love these who's. I love, love, love them. All right. So here's some bad examples. So bad examples are group travel, all inclusive, Mexico and Caribbean and solo travel. That's what a lot of advisors start with. They start with a mode of transportation to be the, what you want to talk about. And although it's important as an advisor and as an expert, as a professional service provider and all the things that we are for you to understand the different modes of transportation, the different modes of travel, that in and of itself, isn't going to light the fire underneath your clients, you know, uh, bank, bank, you know, credit card swiping abilities, their wrist actions, it's not going to light their fire that you are a group travel specialist. It's not going to light their fire that you specialize in all-inclusive resorts. That's really not going to light their fire. What will light their fire is that you specialize in them. So whoever them is, if you can start speaking their language, no, no traveler, Real, I mean, us advisors, as people in the industry speak this, right? But consumers don't speak this language. They don't speak, I'm a solo traveler. I'm an all-inclusive traveler. Like they know they want an experience that equals an all-inclusive. And maybe they're savvy enough to know these terms, but they don't resonate to themselves. I'm a group traveler right? No, they resonate with whatever their group of peoples are, whatever that group of people are that like, so cancer survivors, right? So everybody understands the pink ribbon. They all understand that symbolism that goes with that, that even though it's a group, that collection of people, they recognize the symbols and the words and the terminology that represent their group. A good example of a group of people that really recognize themselves are people who are in sororities and fraternities, right? You just have to throw up a sorority sign. I will don't dare not do it because I'm not in a sorority, but right, you, you throw up whatever the Delta sign is, the AKA sign or whatever other sorority or fraternity. It's an immediate connection for all the other people that are a part of that group. That's the kind of connection as an advisor you want to create is when somebody sees you, hears you, listens to you speak, they realize that you are for them, right? So these examples that most advisors focus on aren't the, aren't the examples that create the kind of connection or conversation that you want to be having with your prospective clients. The question that you need to be asking yourself is why can't they get themselves out of town? Whoever your people are, why can't they get themselves out of town themselves? Why haven't they gotten themselves out of town? So for R Rhonda, you said it's 50 plus year old women. I'm of that age, right? I'm 51. And, you know, I have personally experienced a, an illness and I understand what that's like. So if I were not in the travel industry and I hadn't traveled and I had just come out of my, I, I would be interested in something like that, right? And 
what I would recommend is if you don't, if you don't know if your idea for a group of people is valid, this is where market research comes in. You need to go find those groups of people and you need to interview a couple of them. You need to talk to them. You need to go find where they are. Do they have a Facebook group? Do they have a community? And you need to just sit and watch and listen to what's going on in their lives so that you can speak the same language if that's not something that you've personally done. But for Rhonda, the reason why her people can't get out of town is they've been too busy focused on their health, right? But how she makes this connection for them is now that you're coming out of that, no better time than to take a break from all of that and actually enjoy your health, which is also a plus to your health, right? So understanding why your group of people can't get out of town is going to be critical for you to be able to connect with them. Here's some good examples. And, never, and she never, wow, Rhonda, don't make me cry, right, uh, in April, and she never got to go to Hawaii. And so that is a really powerful story uh, as well. And, and, you know, one of the things we were talking about in group last night is your personal story is a powerful story. You know, I don't really talk a lot about my health story. I, you know, I mean, because it's been three years. But it's a powerful story in terms of getting people to connect because believe it or not, you're not the only one who's going through it. You're not the only one who's ever gone through it. So being 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 comfortable with being able to speak the story in a way that's comfortable to you, right? I'm a very private and personal, so I don't really talk a lot about my personal life, but being able to pull out what's important and related to the ideal client that you have is a very powerful way to connect with people. And it's be, it's beyond just having these images of trips, right? So it's really beyond that. When you start thinking about people, it's really around how you connect your love of travel and allowing people to have these great experiences to, to what they ultimately want as well, right? That's really the power in what you have before you. I really do say we have a superpower because travel really is the medicine for a lot of things, I personally believe. So here's some good examples. So I want to remind you of the bad examples so that we can kind of connect the dots. So here are, here are bad examples, and then we're going to talk about some good examples. So good, and these are actually great examples that I've, of clients that I've worked with. So I had a client um, many years ago, and she specialized in sports travel, but not just generic sports travel. She wanted to work with parents who had competitive uh, kids. At, you know, at the time when we were working together, my kids were in competitive sports teams. And so there's just a lot of travel and coordination, and the coaches usually don't do a really good job of doing that. So her market was really working with the coaches, not really even the parents, but the coaches and the sports providers, because she was going to do end of the year sort of celebrations and all of that. So sports travel, calling those people together, what do they have in common? They have the sport that like their kids are in competitive sports. What do you talk about? Like the, the joys of competitive sports, right? And, and what it's like trying to drag your kids all across the town and the fact that you do need to get away probably out of town um, that's not focused on your kids or even taking the kids with you, right? So adventure travel, although adventure travel is definitely a niche, but really I had a client um, and she, not, she took adventure travel to a whole new um, realm she loved dogs. And so she wanted to work with uh, clients who wanted to bring their pets on trips. So there's a whole thing about like, I mean, you know, again, these are not my specialties, but there is a lot of things that you have to consider when you're traveling with your pet. If you're flying with your pet, if you're traveling and you're, you've got to make, you know, finding um, hotels and accommodations that will accommodate your pet. If you have a big pet, a small pet, right? You know, all of these things that you have to consider when traveling with pets. So I, I can't even remember the name of her business, but it, it really was her specialty was adventure travel. She actually was doing local United States travel, um, but really doing a lot of road trips and finding the perfect accommodations for and, and, and itineraries for people who are traveling cross country with their, with their, with their dogs. Like she had a really cute picture of her dog and all that stuff. So romance travel, everybody relates to romance travel. Yes, I want to work with couples. Yeah, but what kind of couples, right? Couples is still very broad. 
What's very good and specific is a specific type of couple that you want to work with that is here. So professional married couples who are craving, desiring, needing, maybe empty nesters who are needing to reconnect. So you plan that quarterly trips for them. They all have a vacation time. So maybe you're planning trips in that room. Luxury travel. Everybody wants to do luxury travel, but what does luxury travel really mean to whom? And so one of my clients, um, uh, he actually was ex-military himself. I actually have a couple of clients who are ex-military. And, uh, you know, even though you get to travel when you're in the Army, you know, Navy, whatever branch you're in, sometimes you don't get the pleasure of enjoying those destinations. So his idea was really to specialize in luxury travel for ex-military or retired military people really and originating out of the, the bases that do hops. If you're in the military, you know what a hop is and like, you know, you go grab a plane and you get a last minute plane and they'll hop you to wherever, right? And so that was his idea around really catering to military. He since then really created sort of this bro, uh, bro, bro club where it's a group of men that are traveling on um, different, you know, and they're bringing their booze bays or whatever they're called, right? They're bringing their booze and bays and they're also doing these sort of luxury trips uh, for their significant others. And then also connection time for, I think they're all like ex fraternity brothers or something like that. So the point is, is that these are good examples. Why? Why are these great examples? They're great examples because they're focused on the people, not the travel. Does that make sense? Like, because if you focus on people, you take them anywhere. I, I literally say this all the time. If you focus on a person or a group of people, you can take them anywhere in the world that you want to focus on. Like, if you only want to focus on the Caribbean, great. You can take, you can just focus on a group of people and then you are just doing the Caribbean. And if you only like one particular resort, that is all that you do, right? And so you can then win resort, you know, seller of the year if that's what you want to aspire to, right? The point is, don't focus on the property, focus on the people that need to be at the property. Focus on the groups of people that have something in common that when you talk to them, They'll be like, that's me. Yes, that, that, what, what she just said. I want all of that, that she said. And the things that you talk about aren't really going to be, oh, this resort. It's not always going to be resort focused. It's going to be people focused. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So here's the, the real key common factor around the good examples versus the bad examples is that you've identified an area of travel you start with yourself. Like, what do you want to learn about, right? If you if you love Disney, I, I don't. I personally don't love Disney, but if you love Disney, right? Who do you want to work with? People who love Disney, right? People who love the the ears, who love the Magic Mountain or whatever it's called, right? I mean, whatever your thing. So, an area of travel. If it's cruise, you know, I I I tend to tend to not want advisors focused on all inclusives all-inclusive versus cruise. I'm going to tell you why COVID is a prime example why. You know, I get all these people who are like, I mean, and I was one of them, right? I was really a big, giant cruiser, loved to cruise. I, I still am a cruiser. I love cruising, but post-COVID, you know, it's cheaper these days, I think, to do land. But um, travel in terms of mode, right? All-inclusive versus land versus cruise versus whatever those types are, right? I tend to not want you to focus so much on that because, for example, when COVID happened, cruise industry is shut down. Do you know how many businesses were shut down because they didn't know they didn't know really anything about like how to book land or they didn't have any land suppliers? So I don't recommend that you focus on a mode. I say you focus on an area, right? So if it is a destination or an area of the world or a type of of uh, interest, like. You know, I've got a lot of clients who love river cruising, right? So even though that's cruising, river cruising, that's a really specific destination, like, because it's a different type of, of experience when you stop at those ports and you get out and like, so 
That type is what I really mean by an area of travel. And you really marry that with identifying who you want to go on said area or type of travel. Does that make sense? So it's the travel area plus the who is what makes a really powerful niche and a perfect client. Knowing those two things, you've got a great recipe for success. So once you know the who, then we can focus on talking to them, right? And so how many of you all have a consistent way of how you interact with people who you just meet through Messenger, you meet in Facebook groups? How many of you have a consistent way of how you talk? Do you have scripts? Do you have a standard way of how you talk. So some are saying I do, some are saying I don't, right? But who needs to have conversations? You all do. And that really should be your goal. So we talked about this yesterday is that your goal in your travel business is to consistently have more meaningful conversations with people that are qualified as your perfect ideal client. So let's talk about how we do that, right? So again, just want to remind you what your goal is, have more meaningful conversations with qualified travel prospects. Although I am a, a woman who loves to talk, maybe not so much as I've gotten older, but I am, I do have the gift of gab. I do can talk any, I mean, I could talk a wall, a flower off a wall. Um, but the point is meaningful conversations. I don't necessarily want to talk to everybody. I want to talk to everybody and I don't want to have meaningless conversations not when I'm trying to grow my leads, not when I'm trying to grow. I don't want to work with a bunch of people who just want me to do a bunch of quotes for them and really don't have an interest in going the next step, which is booking, right? I'm not interested in that. So when it comes to my business, I'm about the business of my business. So meaningful conversations with people that either qualify themselves or I have a way to qualify them so that I can know quickly if they're the right client. So why do you need to have this uh, a process is so that you can consistently qualify people you can quickly confirm decide if they're the right person they can decide if you're the right service provider and you close that's really what the conversation's purpose is qualify confirm decide and close the quicker you can do this and the more consistent that you can do this these four things the easier your life is going to be when it comes to hitting your goals. All right, but before we do that, it's important to understand the types of conversations you should be having because many of you all want to jump straight to BFF conversations, right? Let me tell you what a BFF conversation is. I have a trip to Bali and it's $3,500 and I just met you. That's a BFF conversation, but it's with the wrong type of person. Do you know why? Because they don't know you. If you guys told me that your average ticket price that you want to sell something is over $2,000. I mean, for some people, even $1,000 is too much for them to spend and they don't know you. But many of you all said multiple thousands of dollars is your average ticket price. You're talking four, 5,000 or plus. Your goal is to move people from strangers to BFF. You can't skip around. You can't go stranger and now they're my BFF. So I met you today and tomorrow I'm going to ask you to drop $5,000 on a, a trip and they don't know anything about you. So really your focus in your travel business is to start attracting as many strangers, converting them into acquaintances, BFFs, right? Because the types of conversations that you have with a stranger are different than the conversations that you can have with your BFF. And you guys know that. That, right? Like just think of any of the close relationships that you have. Do you talk the same with a stranger than you do with your best friend? Probably not, right? Even though you may not know if you have the gift of gab, maybe you may not know everybody's, no one's a stranger to you. You still start off differently and what you can talk about is different. It's no different in marketing. It's no different in uh, you know, working out there, you know, being out there on the internet streets, the relationship is still the same because we're dealing with people. So I'm going to explain to you these stages and we're going to talk about some types of offers that go with these stages that you need to have in your travel business so that you're having the right kind of conversations based on where people are in the stage of the relationship with you. So 
everybody understands that what a stranger is, right? Stranger danger, right? They don't know you. They don't know anything about your travel business. They've just met you. Maybe they saw you. They saw a TikTok reel, right? But even that exa that example that I gave you of that lady that I saw her reel and she she spoke my she spoke my food language through the short reel that she did. I am a stranger to her, but I immediately liked her Instagram page, right? I, I, and I often like travel advisor, people in the travel industry when I like them because I love to utilize them as examples um, in, you know, inside of our courses and that kind of stuff. But I was a stranger to her. Just imagine how powerful that message is for someone who she's trying to attract that potentially is her ideal client, right? What was her offer? It was simply a reel that spoke to my soul, right? Because I'm I'm a I'm a bruncher. I like brunch. I can't find a restaurant that's close by in Stockbridge. Everything's in Atlanta, right? So I got this pain point is I like to eat. I love to eat out of the country, but I also like to eat locally. So she now quickly made a connection for me because the thing that she showed in content resonated with me. And now I'm an acquaintance of her because now I've liked her page. Do you see how that works, right? So she delivered an offer to me and that offer was a very simple offer. It was a piece of content that spoke to my soul. Same thing for you all. You have pieces of content that you can be creating that's going to speak to the soul of your perfect client. That's what you should be creating when it comes to trying to attract strangers. It's not the trip to Bali or the trip to Dubai that's going to speak to them. Maybe it will, but it's probably not going to invoke an immediate, let me buy, let me get on a call with her because I'm not ready for that yet. I want to follow her, maybe see her reels pop up in my thing for a while. I want to see what she talks about. I want to see if she really is my person and she's my peeps, right? That's the power of a stranger offer is it's going to stop the scroll, get the connection for your ideal client so that they can start to relate to you. So let's talk about a, a little bit about these terms. KLT stands for know, like, and trust. That means that the further away they are from you, they don't know, like, or trust you. And your goal in your travel business is to get more people to know, like, and trust you. Because the more people that know, like, and trust you are more likely when you get ready to drop that said promotion to Bali, to, you know, to fill in the blank destination, cruise, wherever you want to take them, right? Either on a signature itinerary or a group trip, they'll be ready to buy because they've already been warmed up to you and they're already probably in the BFF stage. Does that make sense? Right? So your goal in the stranger phase is not to sell. It's not to sell. It's to introduce yourself and start the conversation. And the kinds of conversations that you have with people who are strangers are low risk conversations, unevasive conversations, conversations that get them to click, opt in, and get to know you. Make sense, right? So blogs, videos, eBooks, reports, templates, guides, podcasts, right? Reels of interesting topics. Those are all low, no hard sale thing. I mean, literally, I'm sure she's now going to show up in my inbox and I'm going to be looking for the next, uh, you know, Atlanta recommendation that she's got. And now she, you know, and, it, you know, you know, I didn't follow the bunny trail all the way through, but the next bunny trail is, is to get me to her site and then boom, get, get my email address. That's the bunny trail that you ultimately want your stranger to follow. Acquaintances are really ready for more, right? They're a little bit ready for more, you know, strangers, coffee, I'll watch a reel or two, I'll read a blog, maybe I may download something. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm interested, but I'm still not that interested. I'm busy. I got, you know, I got kids. I got graduation. I got all this other stuff that's keeping me, right? But then I start to see you regularly, right? You're, you're showing up in my inbox now regularly. You're showing up in my reels everywhere, right? Your name is popping up every time. And so now it's summertime and now I got to plan, I got to plan next spring's trip. And, you know, who's that lady that I remember that is the travel blogger. What does she have to say about this destination, right? I, do I remember just seeing that she just talked about this destination? I'm gonna go look her up, right? That's what acquaintances do. You wanna give them reasons to remember your name. 
right? You give them reasons to be on the top of their mind. That's what in the acquaintance phase is. It's really, they're starting to know, like, and trust you. They're starting to recognize your name. Like there's a guy I follow. These are all not travel examples, but I want to give them to you because they're powerful. There's a guy like I, I, I could always do better in cleaning. So I'm, I, I am a gadget person. And so there's a guy who's got these reels and he's like cleaning his house. Like, so I bought a steamer that he recommended because it's on his Amazon thing, right? I'm a buyer like that. Many people are, they take recommendations based on what, but you gotta be there making the recommendations. You gotta be there showing up as the expert. So when they're ready to buy, you're there to buy from. Does that make sense? So acquaintances, good things and good offers for you to be having and good types of conversations for you to be having is to be hosting virtual events, hosting live events, hosting in-person events. If you like to work with people directly, right? You know, I'm in the Atlanta area. Atlanta is a hot spot to like people love to get together here, right? You know, in-person events are I think definitely post COVID people crave that because there's so much online, you know, virtual zoom meetings, everybody knows what zoom is now. And so people actually hosting live events, I think is something that we have gotten away from. And so when somebody's going left from a marketing perspective, I'm trying to go the other way. I'm trying to do what's not the normal thing that everybody else is doing because it allows me to also stand out from the rest. So webinars, FAQs, social proof, testimonials, trials, right? Hosting events, those are all good, in-person or virtual. Soft selling is okay. Invitations to book a discovery call, invitations to submit a travel inquiry, invitations to do a weekend trip or, you know, do last minute deals. These are all great things to do during the acquaintance phase. Now, BFFs is, is, where, is where most of you all start from your offers. You start at the BFF stage. You're like, I got a $3,500 package. Here's the flyer coming by and buy now, right? And that's great, but you cannot lead with that for every type of client or every type of person that you come in contact with. And so when you're ready to drop a promotion or you're ready to sell, this is perfect for your clients that are your BFFs. You've been nurturing the hell out of them. They know your name. They love you. They show up. They're ready to buy. You say, I'm going. And they say, where? That's who you sell to, right? So your goal in your travel business is to get more of that. And I'm not talking about your immediate BFFs. I'm not talking about your real BFFs that you grew up with from second grade. I'm talking about the ones that you create who understand who your business is and how you are the bomb.com as the provider of the service in your business, right? That they know when they get stuff from you and the quality that you provide because they've seen it demonstrated in the way that you show up. They've seen it demonstrated in the downloads and the things that you have them consume. They automatically will make the connection that you got to be about your business, right? That's who you drop promotions to. Dropping promotions to strangers and hoping they buy will keep you disappointed. Don't get me wrong. You can do it. It's just way more expensive to try and get a stranger to buy than a BFF to buy, right? Like, because your BFFs, they, they know you. They know who you are, right? Please feel free to ask me any questions if you have any questions that are coming up. So these are the customer stages. What you really want to be doing in these customer stages, I've created this ARC system, is your three goals in life is attract, relate, and convert. You want to be attracting people consistently, attracting strangers by some sort of offer that's non-intrusive, and your objective is to get them digits, right? Get the email digits, get the phone number digits, however you're going to relate to them. Get them in a Facebook group, get them in a YouTube channel, I don't care, but your goal is to attract them to you build relationships with them. So having a ongoing communication with them, conversation through email, through messenger, through events, whatever your relationship mechanism is going to be, blogs, video logs, whatever that is, you want to have a relationship process. And then you want to be asking for the sale because if you do A and R, right, right, that's just a bunch of friends. I don't, I, I like friends, but I'm in business to make money. And so, although I like friends, I'm always giving you an opportunity to buy. And so should you. So you're looking to always have a reason for them to swipe. Okay. Really marketing is all about finding the right customer, right? So your perfect client 
right? Making them the right offer at the with the right messaging. That's it. If you can do those three things, you've got, again, another recipe for success. So let's talk about consumptive conversation versus interactive conversations. We want to maximize your time no matter what you do. So we talked a little bit about strangers and what you should be doing, but let's talk about consumption conversations. These are conversations that people have internally with themselves based on something that they're consuming that you've provided for them, right? So I like to create content that starts the conversation in their head about whatever the topic is, right? Blogs, vlogs, guides, templates, eBooks, right? They will get that thing, they will consume it and they'll be like, yep, yeah, I never thought about that. Or yeah, oh, that's a great point. Oh, I'm gonna save this for later. I'm gonna do this later. I'm gonna whatever. That's what consumption conversations are. Build these kinds of uh, conversation pieces. So I uh, have this here, your wedding, your way. I think this is a guide um, that I found on Pinterest. I love Pinterest as for inspiration. And um, the, the, the Pinterest is a great resource. So if you're like, I don't know what to write about, go on Pinterest, figure out who your ideal person is, go on Pinterest and see what kind of consumptive uh, content is out there that people can click on and start having these sort of mental conversations. I mean, Pinterest, YouTube, those are great sources for consumption type, type of content. So if you if you aren't a video person, fine, then maybe you need to be a writer and you need to do uh, blogs and you need to write so people can consume whatever you have in the written word. Maybe you don't want to come in person. You could do audio, right? This whole idea of faceless, uh, faceless YouTube channels is sort of a, a new thing that I'm following, right? Doing guides, templates, love people. People love to print out stuff, even though we shouldn't print out stuff. How many of you guys are printers? Like I just went through like a ream of paper last week, printing off a bunch of stuff. And I, I do so kill trees. I know I should stop, but I still am a, a, a tree killer because I like, I like pen to paper. I like to feel uh, just the whole act of writing and, you know, doodling and doing all of that. And people love that too. So if you've got a group of people and they are, you know, type A people, they'll love guides that are fill in the blank that they can write on and they can do, you know, actually sending people physical, physical, um, uh, th through the mail, literally, I'm talking like a physical something that they can, they can hold and be tangible, that even though we are very digital, people love that kind of stuff too. So like, if you, um, love to, I, I personally love building guides and handouts and that kind of stuff. And so early on in my coaching career, I used to design these, you know, really fill in the blank PDFs. And then, you know, people like to even have those printed out. So having that as an option. So like if let's say you are doing a group trip and you actually print out a lookbook and make that for sale after the fact or before a sale where they could put in their notes and all the stuff that they want. Those are things that people love uh, to have. So don't forget about the physical printing of a thing as well. So this is, again, an example of consumption conversations, things that people can consume and have these conversations in. So what do you do? How do you actually do this? So you've got this guide, you've got this vlog, you've got this blog, you've got this thing that you want to deliver to somebody. What do you need to do? You need to be like a stranger off a funnel because you want to attract strangers to you. So a funnel is really just a fancy marketing word of, of like fishing, right? You go fish, right? The offer is the bait and you're going to reel them in is the funnel, right? So you're going to throw out an offer hopefully. And the way you get that offer is through traffic. So, right. Some way you got to make sure you're in front of the right people. You're going to throw out an offer that your ideal client is going to love. Right. And they're going to raise their hand and that's how you hook them. You hook them in, you reel them in. And what do you want? You want a way to have a meaningful conversation. And that's what a funnel does for you. And so what, before I jump to here, I just want to talk a little bit. How many of you guys feel like you know what a funnel is type in the comments do you know what a funnel is or do you actually need some see some examples because literally you all have already participated in funnels and you just don't even know it if you if you don't know what a funnel is then you you um you i'm going to give you an example 
Danielle, uh, of course, Danielle, you know what a funnel is, right? Sure, I know, but just making sure um, you have a general idea. All right, so let's uh, let's let me show you an example of the funnel. I'm going to use the registration page for this training. This is an example of a funnel, right? It's simply a landing page that has an offer that your ideal client wants. That's all. A funnel is just a series of pages. This is the first page, right? So when you came here, right, maybe you didn't come here, maybe you came through a Facebook ad and there was a lead and you clicked on that lead and what did I get? I got your email address. That's exactly what your goal is because you want an even exchange of information. I'm going to give you a thing and in exchange, you're going to give me a thing. The thing that I want is a way to communicate with you so we can talk later, right? What do you want is whatever I'm putting on this page. That's going to be the same thing for you. So for your trips, right? It could be information. It could be a destination guide. It could be a, it could be, it could be the top 10 local places in Atlanta, right? Or whatever city you want to do. Remember, just because you are selling an out of the country destination or somewhere else that's not locally, you maybe want to attract local people. So getting them interested in local events that are around, becoming a steward of that is a perfect offer for travel advisors, right? Because people who like to eat, people who like to experience culture locally, obviously, potentially would want to experience them out of the country, right? So simply put, a funnel is got the first page, which is the thing. Whatever that thing is, whatever that offer is, whatever it is that you're talking about. And then the next thing is, is you're capturing the information. And then once you capture the information, you that's how you get them. That's the hook, right? That's the, the bait, the person bit. You've got their contact information and then you deliver what it is that you said, right? So this particular funnel, the event, you're here you're here. That's what I wanted. I wanted you guys to be here. Even if you don't attend, you're still getting emails to let you know about the replays. You're still, you're still now a part of the web. When it comes to travel, it's going to be the same thing. If you do a destination guide, so instead of this being an event request, this is a destination guide for a, maybe a series of information. I think even in my today's email that I sent out to our email list, it was about creating a destination series and how that's a great stranger offer for you all to do. So to do that, let's say I was doing a destination series and it was going to be all about, you know, all the places in, um, in uh, you know, Indonesia that you can go and visit, right? And so the offer is that. And so that's going to tell me, and instead of it, me talking about the location, this headline is going to say, right, for women over 50 who are too busy to think about going to the, you know, go, going, going to lunch, right? Here's why you need to be thinking about going further than that. Something like that, right? If that was my target audience. So the language that's on here is going to speak to my ideal client. All right, does that help you guys out with the example? All right, so simply a funnel is a way to capture the attention of your ideal client, get their contact information, and then deliver what you said you would on the first page and then start the conversation. All right, so let's talk about um, the reason why these funnels are great is because they qualify the person by virtue of them opting in, right? If I've done a good job on the language that's on that landing page, right? If I did a good job on this page, I shouldn't get a bunch of doctors signing up for this. Does that, does that make sense? Like, I, like people who are not my ideal client shouldn't sign up for this event. They wouldn't be interested in it because it's not for them, right? So I specifically want the language on any of my opt-in pages to be super clear that I'm speaking to a particular type of client. Same thing for you. So if you want a high dollar, high value, you want to sell high whatever, what is going to speak that client's language? Make sure that the look, the content, and all of that is going to help you 
help them confirm that they're in the right space. So good offers do that very thing for you. They allow a person to like say, yes, that's me. It allows the confirmation to occur that says, yes, I, I, I believe I'm in the right space. I like what she's saying. I like what they're saying. And everybody is on the same page. The other thing that conversations do though, when you have interactive conversations, they allow you to quickly confirm. And I love Messenger for this. We used to do a lot of Messenger marketing. Email marketing with requests to respond allow me to confirm that people are in the right space. Having meetings, webinars, and events and having phone conversations are a great way for me to get quick confirmation that a person is my ideal client, that I'm the right service provide them. Having them attend an event where I can actually talk to a person, that's also another way. So interactive conversations really allow you to confirm that these people that you're talking to and working with are the right people. Again, my goal in the confirmation stage is not to sell. My, my goal in the confirmation conversation is to confirm. I'm trying to confirm before I even tell them a price, tell them my services, that they're even the kind of client that I want to work with. And so how do you think I do that? How do you think that you would do that? The only way to do this is to have a criteria. The only way to be able to confirm that somebody is the right fit is to have a standard, is to have a, com a, a criteria by which you operate determining if somebody is a good fit or not. Whatever that may be, it's important that you have one. So here's a lot of the problems with the way that we're, we're doing things now is, um, and, and I personally experienced this problem in my business, I'm going to say back in 2020, all the way up until last year, until we consolidated platforms, I am big on Facebook, not so big on the other social media platforms, but very big on Facebook. And um, so we have a lot of messenger conversations. I have ceased to do as many as we used to have, but we had a lot of messenger conversations. So I'd be in messenger, then I'd be, um, at the time I was using active campaign. So we were doing all of our email marketing out of active campaign. We were sending SMSs out of active campaign. I'm having Facebook messenger conversations. I'm trying to keep track of like, where did they originate, where they are in the pipeline, then we had a pipeline management system and active campaign. And the whole point is all that stuff was disconnected. So I could never tell at any given moment where somebody was in our sales process. Like, I'm like, I don't remember if I was talking to them, I couldn't find the message. I, it was a hot mess just trying to remember all the conversations. Then I had to hire a team of people to try and keep up with the conversations. Don't get me wrong, it was lucrative because the more conversations you have, the more no's you get and the more yeses you get, right? So don't get me wrong, money was great, sales were great, but it was chaos. It was, it was, it, I was working 50, 60 hours a week just to try and keep up with all of the conversations we were generating um, in our business. And they were over multiple platforms. Now, many would be like, that's a great problem to have Sunday. I wish I had that. But my point is, is that if you want to avoid that, let's avoid it up front. What I will tell you is I wasted a lot of time just trying to keep it all straight because I am a tools person. So I had many chat, I had messenger, I had, you know, I had, um, I, we were doing text messaging out of using simple tests. Like we just had all of these conversations everywhere. And I, again, I could never tell what, what, where, where and who and all of that. So we wasted a lot of time trying to piece the story together. Um, and oftentimes what happens is that if you are spending all this time in the system and not working the system, you're missing conversations. You don't get back to people as quickly as you can, right? Maybe you're using travel joy and you've got, you, you're missing requests. Maybe they're not, you're not responding in time. Maybe you've got people who are calling you and you don't return their phone calls because you don't answer your phone quick enough and you don't have a system to respond to the phone message, right? doesn't matter what it is. The more fragmented these conversations are, the more opportunities that you miss and the higher likely it is that you will miss hitting your goal. So the, the solution really is consolidation. 
try to, as much as possible, consolidate the conversations that you have across the board. So I want to show you what we do in Travel, Travel Pro Suite in terms of that consolidation. I showed you a little bit yesterday, um, and I don't even know that we're having a lot of conversations in, um, um, in the demo account, but I am going to show you what is great about this because... What I do know about Facebook is they do have a bunch of bots. Like how many of you guys are getting messenger convert, like people telling you all the time in Facebook that you're about to get closed down and shut down and um, the, the world's about to blow up and your account is too, right? So the, but the bots are strong in Facebook. And so we've got like a whole automation that like, you know, shuts it down really quick and deletes it out of our thing. But that's what all these are. These are bots who are talking to me. And so before, you know, now the, the automation is not running in our, I actually probably need to do that, get that running in our demo account. But these are all people who have reached out to me and I can tell they reached out to me in Facebook because this, this is a messenger icon. This is an Instagram icon. I think this is an SMS. This may be an email icon. And then we even have SMS here. So all of the conversations that, my clients would be having with me instead of me having to go because it used to be I would have a tab that was Facebook open I'd be I'd have Facebook messenger open I'd have Instagram open and if you have LinkedIn I'd have LinkedIn open and then I used to have our text messaging platform open and then I'd have active campaign open so I had all these tabs open trying to figure out I know somebody sent me a message. Where is it? Like, so I'd be hopping around the tabs all day trying to figure out where's that conversation. There wasn't really a good mechanism. So then I look for software that try to consolidate all the messages, but they didn't interact with my CRM that I had to build, you know, zaps. There's all this stuff I was trying to do just to get everything in one place so I can minimize the tabs and remember where I picked off from yesterday. So what I love about what we can do here is at least across the platforms and all of the ways that you have conversations is that we can consolidate that into one location. And then you can start to organize those conversations on the right hand side. You can start to book appointments directly here. You can add them to your pipelines. You can add tasks to them. You can add notes. You can tag them. You can do all sorts of things that are going to live with that contact through the history of that contact, as opposed to now being in Facebook, as opposed to being in your phone, on your, you know, on your, you know, I got my phone right here. And I'm like, instead of like having this text conversation that I'm having with people, right, all of that conversation data is here and in one place it saves you time and allows you to really focus on the conversation. This is literally, we have a script, right? You reach out and we download a guide. Like we, you know, we run Facebook ads and we're running messenger ads and we're trying to have conversations with you in messenger, reply now, get a, get whatever. And boom, that starts the conversation. So there's like, you know, now we've got automation that once you reply, it's automatically uh, speaking to you back based on a keyword and we can do all of that in a system so it helps automate the conversation in a non kind of robotic way because like some of this can look can can feel like i'm not really talking to a person but right if you respond to a facebook ad and you say yes and i say okay here's the link to the download that you just asked for right that's not really body that's just like okay and i can insert myself any time in that process to start to pick up the conversation that's really what we want to do is i want to be able to talk to my prospective clients as quickly as possible so that I can confirm that they're the right client and get them to the next stage in the process. So our tool allows you to do that again across multiple platforms. The platforms that we can do that are inside of our marketing area. We integrate with Facebook business, Instagram business, GMB, which is Google My Business. So if somebody starts a conversation with you on Google My Business, we can bring that in as well. LinkedIn, Twitter, and um, TikTok. I'm like, what is X Twitter? Um, formerly Twitter and TikTok. So any and each of these platforms have messenger capabilities. So we can bring all of those conversations into one central location. What's also great is at a contact level, I'm going to bring up my contact information here. 
is, you know, we have our phone, we have our phone um, connected and we can also have an SMS conversation. We can also have an email conversation and all of that information is going to live here with the contact. So conversations are powerful, but they're only as powerful as you are to keep them going, right? And also be able to confirm that the person is the right person. So again, I don't want to talk to everybody. I don't want to have a personal conversation with everyone because I don't have the time for that, right? But if I have a sales team that's really trying to get me more travel bookings, that's what they're hired there for, right? That's something that you could outsource once you start to do it. If I'm going to be giving out guides, I'm going to be doing blogs, I'm going to be doing events, I could hire a VA to interact with my attendees, while as they're enrolling, right? Those are great conversations to be having. They're go you're going to maybe host a, an event that's gonna talk about a popular destination. You have a guest speaker, maybe your BDM is coming in. You can have everybody reply, yes, I wanna attend. And then you start a conversation. Okay, well, this is what I want you to do before you come. I want you to download this thing and capture the first five items that come, right? Those are powerful conversations to be had because the more you can interact with people, the more that they can what? Know, like, and trust you. All right, so methods of this are that we talked about just now are email, SMS, social media scheduling. So having conversations via social media that garner um, engagement are powerful. Having appointments with people, so doing discovery calls or hosting events through a calendar um, is great. And then consolidating the conversations across the platforms is really super powerful from an organization perspective so that you can quickly tag people, segment them, so that when you have um, communications or events or promotions that have that you want to target specific people based on the actions that they've taken, you are able to do that. All right. What I will tell you is the more conversations that you have, plus the actions that you take, there is nothing else that can come from that but results. I'm going to tell you, I've got a, I've had thousands of people tell me no. But I've also, as a result of that activity, I've had hundreds of people tell me yes. And I wouldn't have had that had I not gone through the act of having more conversations. I know my audience so well because I have talked to them so much that I can't help but know them. So if you're hiding behind your computer screen and you're not talking, you can't possibly know your client as well as you know, as you think you do. You've got these ideas in your head, but if you've never had conversations with your perfect client on a regular basis where you're interacting with them and you're talking to them about why they can't get out of town, what they like about being out of town, what makes it easier for them, the places they want to go, what they struggle with when they're trying to get out of town, when they're out of town, coming back into town, all of those things, then it becomes really difficult for you to, to relate to them. That's your only job. Your job is to have more conversations, right? And qualify people that meet your criteria for being a perfect client. So the more conversations you can have before they become a client, the better prepared you are to have better conversations with future people and take action. Don't talk to everybody, but make sure you have a process by which you do talk to those so that you can start to get the results that you want. All right. So what are your next steps? Your next steps are pretty simple. You need to accept the formula. So let's go over the formula really quick. I want to just remind you what the formula is. And I should have had it um, here, but the formula is you want to qualify, confirm, decide, and close. You want to qualify the person as quickly as possible. If they can self-qualify, that's great. You want to confirm them confirm that you're the right service provider. You confirm that they're the right client. You want to have them and you make a decision quickly and you want to close the deals. Okay. So that that's number one. Number two is you want to standardize the conversation as much as you possibly can. And that the best way to do that is through a script, right? It may, it may feel a little weird, like having a script for yourself, but it really keeps you on track. Every time I don't follow my script, when I'm in a sales conversation, I just started talking about stuff that doesn't, because I talk too much, like I talk too much, right? So the point is, is just follow a script, 
have a script by which for all of your discovery calls that you go through. Doesn't mean that you can't deviate from it, but it really keeps the conversation on point, allows you to hit the objectives that you want. It allows you to get the information from your client that you need so that you can confirm, make a decision quickly, and then decide if you're going to close or not. You wanna make sure that you have a criteria for why you wanna work with someone, right? How many of you have a criteria of who you want to work with? Do you have any deal breakers? Do you have anything that you're like, yep, if I hear or see this, you're out of here. Like how many of you have deal breakers defined? I do. I have like hard deal breakers. <laughs> Somebody said a deal breaker is U.S. travel. If that's your deal breaker, all right. All right. But are there any other characteristics that you have that are a deal breaker. So shopping around. So using the word shopping around, that's great. Okay. Children, right? You don't want to work with children <laughs> or you don't want to work with people who are traveling with children. Okay. And the great thing about all of these, um, uh, is children your deal breaker or, well, you said ladies with brunch. So I'm thinking children is your deal breaker not wanting to pay a design fee and complaining about how much, right? So the great thing about all of these things that you guys have written right here is all of those can be done before you even have a conversation. Like you can, you can, you can weed those people out that have those deal breaker considerations by having the right questions in your intake form or creating content that specifically calls that out on an opt-in page or in a post, right? Um, you know, Disney, Universal, Lego, Lego, et cetera, right? Those are all deal breakers for you, right? So the great thing is, is if you have hard, fast deal breakers, then those deal breaker types of questions need to be a part of your intake process, need to be a part of your, your process by which you take in leads so that you can quickly segment them into a bucket that's like, do not send the list to or send them specific content or deals or, you know, promotions that if, if you do want to, you know, not potentially lose that business, you know, maybe you're sending them only on group trips that you do once a year, if you get enough of those, right? The point is, is that the deal breakers are great as qualification questions. So if you have a deal breaker, that deal breaker should be a part of the decision criteria that you accept on the first step of your request process or certainly the second step. So when you're doing the discovery call, those questions should be questions that you ask during the discovery call, because that's part of your confirmation and your decision factor that you need to do here. Frankly, if something is, if I have a, a hard, fast deal breaker, I want to know before I do a discovery call, like, I don't even want to do a discovery call with you if you're breaking my deal, if you, if you got a deal breaker issue. Like, so for some of the things that you guys are saying, I make those as questions in my survey. Um, not wanting to pay a design fee and complaining about how much, right? So Adonica, if you're getting a lot of those up front, I would probably like put that as a qualifying question as one of like, I'd probably put that as the last question or statement. And I'd have a check off on my survey that was like, you know, let people know up front that our agency charges a design fee um, and you could put the actual number or you could tell the range if that's what you want. Um, Disney Universal Lego, right? Um, Danielle, you know, the, uh, knowing you and the types of trips that you curate, it's not likely you would get somebody, but on your, um, on your intake form, if you do do family, like, I don't know, I don't remember who your ideal client is, but if you do do uh, families or what have you, I would put Disney as a checkbox because I want to know those people who are interested in that. So I could immediately disqualify them. Right. And then I would set up a rule that would disqualify them immediately because they put Disney, if that's a major deal breaker to you. Right. So the point is, is that understand your decision criteria, understand what makes somebody an ideal client and what makes somebody a horrible client and put those factors in your process so that you can quickly qualify them because there's no reason for you to have a call with them, right? I mean, 
unless you feel like, like, I'm not in the business of trying to convince you to do things the way that I want you to do them. Like, I'm, I just, there's too many people in the world for me to have to try and convince you to pay my fee. It's, it's too many people in the world. So like, I'm like, I actually follow this coach that, um, this guy is, and I tell everybody, but I love Myron Golden and, you know, he's really very cocky. I'm not as cocky as him, but he was like, you know, he's got these really high ticket things. And he's like, I, I, I don't try and convince people to buy my stuff. He's like, I, I tell you what it is. And if you think if, 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 if after listening to me, you find value in it, I'm going to give you an opportunity to buy it. And if you buy it, great. If you don't, great. Right. And that's really the position I want to be in when I sell travel, when I sell coaching, when I sell train, it doesn't matter. I don't want to, I don't want to convince you. So the much, the more I can give you what I've got, you know, you make a decision based on, is there value for you or not? That's where I want to be for your travel business. Same thing. Like who wants to sit here and convince somebody that they want a trip of a lifetime? Like you either come prepared to have the trip of a lifetime because I'm going to bring it like, right. <laughs> I'm going to bring it. You bring the money, you bring the, your family and you bring your friends and I'm going to give it to you. Right. So I don't want it to convince you. You want the trip of a lifetime. Right. So you want to make sure that those people have already out convinced themselves and they don't come to the call or something that makes it clear to them that you're either out of their league or whatever that is. And again, it's not about being snooty. It's about being clear, creating that clarity for them and for yourself. And so your next goal is making sure that you really understand your people. Like your people are your people. That's it. Like it's not the travel, right? Your travel is the tool to get your people what they want. But really your mentality should be about the service of the people and travel is the tool that you service them with, right? Plan for the objections. Understand why they would say no or why they, why they want to go now. What's preventing them from going now? Like those are the types of confirmation questions and qualification questions that you want to do in an interactive kind of conversation. As if I'm on Messenger and I want you, ultimately, my goal is to get you booked into a discovery call. What I want to understand is why now? Like, are you like, what are you trying to go on your trip? If you tell me, you know, in 20, in 2030, when your kids graduate from high school, I'm like, well, why don't you catch me when it's closer to, right? You know, if you tell me that, you know, I ask you one of the questions that I'm asking you is um, when are you ready to make the decision? When you, when are you ready to deposit? And they say, well, in three months, I'm not going to waste my time doing a proposal for you. Cause if you're not ready to deposit today or within the next two days, right? Anything that I do for you is mute, right? So that's gotta be a part of your qualification and you need to understand what's preventing and what objections they're dealing with. And most people are dealing with, most of you all may think that they're dealing with money. Money is not the objection. It's the value that you have created for them in the trip that is not congruent with their expectations, right? Or you didn't qualify them and they had a money issue and they wanted they wanted a steak and they have a McDonald's. I mean, McDonald's is no longer even a valid example anymore because mcdonald's is as much as a steakhouse these days right like you know like a convenience store of fried chicken right and they wanted a steak like that's literally kind of where we're at there so you get a plan for why they would say no what are the internal objections that they're dealing with and again money is not always the objection it really is maybe they you delivered an experience that wasn't really what they wanted maybe their budget was they wasn't what they really said it was, but you got to be able to plan for this upfront. So if you can start to plan and practice what those objections that your clients would have, it'll make you much more prepared uh, to close your deals better. Don't close on accident. And what I mean by that is be, be purposeful about the offers and the trips that you design for people. Your goal should not be to design for everyone. It should be for those that meet your criteria. You want to extend offers to people that are really ready to buy, that are really ready to move forward. So if you're not asking the question when you're ready to deposit for fear that that may scare somebody away, that's something you've got to practice because 
you want to close the deal. Like that's what we're doing. We're closing deals. We're not, we're not just doing this because we don't have anything better to do. You want more bookings. You got to close more, right? If you want to close more, you got to talk more. You got to have more sales conversations. You got to have more reasons for people to say yes to you. So after all that said and done, the point is you got to measure and adjust. You don't know how good or bad you're doing unless you are tracking how many conversations you're having, how many actions you're taking. And the actions I'm talking about, how many calls are you having? How many um, uh, intakes are you doing? How many quotes are you delivering? How many closes are you doing? You got to track it to understand what your conversion is. Because one of the things that we talked about yesterday was... If you want five bookings a month or a quarter or whatever your time frame is, how many, how many, how many inquiries do you need to have? Somebody had that number down to science. They're like, I need eight, I need 40 on the top. So that immediately told me that they have a 30, I think it was like 29% conversion, right? You need to know those numbers. Those numbers help you drive what actions you need to be taking in your business. If you have, let's say, a 5% close rate, you're new at it. And, and I've been there. I, let me just tell you, I've been there. I remember when I first started um, whole, doing sales calls. Um, and this is what we do. You guys are high ticket sellers. You got to be doing the same types of high ticket sales and sales calls are one of them. You may not call them a sales call, but that's what it is. When you do a presentation for a client on a trip and it's a multiple thousand dollar trip it's a sales call like you may not call it that but that's what it is and so i remember when i first started doing these kinds of calls like i would do like my conversion was like i don't know two or three percent like i i would just would i was not knocking it out of the park i was so depressed i was like i'm such a horrible salesperson i'm never going to close anything but you know how i got better more conversations, <laughs> more conversations. You can't get better at a thing, avoiding the thing. You can't get better at marketing by not marketing. You can't get better at sales by not selling. You have to do it repetitively to get better. That's the only way to get better is to do more of it. So you want to measure and adjust to see where you've got to do the improvement. All right. We are about 10 minutes before the end of the hour. I'm going to remind you because this is a wrap. This is pretty much it. Conversations is where we're at. I'm going to remind you, if you guys want to have some of those conversations inside of Travel Pro Suite, you can download um, and get start getting everything set up so that you can have these conversations inside of our platform. If you are a part of our VIP at the conclusion of this, I'm going to see you in the VIP room and we're going to continue the conversation but do I have a sneak peek before I do the sneak peek? If you do download and you sign up for our Travel Pro Suite, we inclusive in our Travel Pro Suite, that masterclass that you get is a bonus training called Discovery Calls That Rock. And this is a really great training. And I'm going to tell you why, because it teaches you how to conduct the discovery call with your client. So you've taken that intake form in from your client. They said, I want to go to Aruba. I want to take my five kids. I want to, you know, we want to do a family friendly, blah, blah. We want to go on this time of the year. We got a $1,500 budget. It talks to you, this training really talks to you about how to prepare for that call. And then actually the types of questions you need to be having in that call so that you can either make the decision to close that call or let the call go, right? So inside of uh, when you sign up for the Travel Pro Suite, you get the bonus training, which is a discovery call that rock. And it's a part of mastering your travel requests. It's like right there at the bottom of that training, you'll get that bonus masterclass. There's also a discovery call template that's uh, included in that bonus training and you get that when you sign up for Travel Pro Suite. All right, so we are now gonna switch over to the VIP room, but before I do so, I'm gonna entertain a couple of phone call, I mean, messages. If you would like to join us in the um, VIP room, let me stop sharing um, and then get our, I always like, okay, all right, stop share make sure I got um, all of your questions and then you can join us in the VIP room here. 
All right. So I think somebody asked a question. How would you do that about design fee? I usually don't share it until I tell them that the value that I bring and what I can do from them. So um, I, I think that you are referring to how do you let people know that you charge a design fee um, before they get on the call as you say that, like you tell them that you, you don't have to tell them the price, but you can tell them that you charge a design fee and that they should expect um, that you could do that in the comfort. Yesterday, I showed you guys the funnel for taking the intake. So as a part of that confirmation page, you could have a, like, let them know, right? What a design fee is like do like a little education on what it is and the value that it brings and sort of talk to them. So they're already prepped there. So for those that are like, oh yeah, I'm not interested in that. They'll either cancel the call or what have you. So again, you don't have to talk about price, but you talk about the process that, you know, we, you know, our agency charges a design fee. Maybe you don't know what a design fee. So let me tell you what a design fee is, what it covers, what's it included, what are the benefits, blah, blah, blah. And do all of that before the call. You don't have to share the price. Does that make sense? You do that on your sales page. You could be a part of your request page. You could be a part of your confirmation page. You could be a part of your survey. You could do it any part of those parts of your process. All right, hopefully that answered your question, Adonica. All right, if there are no questions, then I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are going to be talking about promoting your services, right? So your travel designing and planning is a service. So we're going to talk about how do you promote those services so you get more inquiries, right? So you got to promote in order for people to do the inquiry. So we're going to talk all about what you need to be doing about promotion. So do not miss tomorrow. And if you are in the VIP space, you still have opportunity to sign up for VIP and join us in the room where we are doing all about breakouts, uh, breakthroughs, not breakouts. We are going to break out and do breakthroughs. So we're going to talk about some we actually had some homework in the vip room yesterday so we're going to talk about that and anything else that you vipers want to do if you guys don't have any more questions i will see you same time tomorrow for our last day of sweet success mastering your travel request process do you guys have any more questions if not i'll see you tomorrow i think we're good all right see you guys tomorrow bye